I think today the bias is likely towards adding. Um, if we go back in time to when Jay Powell did his testimony, his first semi-annual testimony to the Congress, he was asked about near-term policy, and the way he talked about it was in December, they thought they were going to do three. The news that they've got since December has been the tax cuts will be more front-loaded, the spending package is there, they hadn't thought about it, and inflation is looking better than it had before. And so that logical sequence necessarily le leads you to adding another dot. In, as far as recessions, I also saw in your notes that not likely this year or next, maybe by 2020, it's, a, it's even odds for a recession between now and 2020 based on, does there have to be a reason or does it, <laughs> is it just uh, the, the length of time right. of the expansion? So it's not the length of time of the expansion. There doesn't necessarily have to be a good reason up front. Bad things happen to good economies all the time. But this year, things are looking pretty solid. The fiscal stimulus should keep things humming along. So the probability is probably low this year. But over time, the probabilities accumulate we don't think there's going to be a disruptive trade war, but you can't rule it out. So there's some probability for you there. And by the time you get to 2020, the Fed is going to be outright restrictive, slowing the economy down to keep inflation under control. And this boost that we're going to get this year and next from the fiscal package is going to start to so that, roll off. So that can happen for, with inflation below 2%. Within a year or two, we could still be at a point where we get a classic recession where the Fed actually puts the brakes on because they're worried about prices. That actually could happen even from these levels. Not, in my view, if inflation stays below 2%. Our forecast of what the Fed's going to do. There, is there any other way to cause a recession? Could, could the debt service on a 4% 10-year, all of a sudden, we be real? oh, my God. You know, <laughs> we, I mean, we're spending more on, on just maintaining the debt we have than we are on defense and I mean you can break it down and, and the debt service is more than we're spending on a lot of, of services and if it doubles or something from here isn't that going to be a, like so a shock? I completely agree it's remarkable our projections have the debt uh, the, the deficit as a share of GDP getting up to over five and a half percent in a couple of years that is absolutely unprecedented when you're not in a recession uh, and so if and we don't think of this as the base case, but there's always a risk that people could take a look at that, markets could take a look at that, and decide to just step back just a bit. And those higher interest rates from people stepping back from mm -hmm. treasuries, that could be an adverse shock to the economy. Okay, RJ, I, I, I think you're a little bit more sanguine, I think. You don't think, what was your no recession in how long? Three to five years? Or two, what, what, what's, what's your view? Now, we think a recession is unlikely in the next three years. Three years. I okay. have to agree that. I have to agree that the, you know, the Fed has a bit of a track record. Uh, Over-tightening followed by recessions within the next you know, 12 to 24 months is something you see often in history. Uh, your point, Joe, about the debt and the debt burdens suggests uh, that the Fed faces limits on how high they can go before we start seeing some, call it self-correcting mechanisms. Stocks, uh, corporate performance, interest costs, squeezing financial performance. So I, I don't think we're apt to see uh, the Fed turn too aggressive for fear that they go too far. And although the dots are biased higher today, I'm not sure the 2018 median dot is, is apt to go up. Uh, I don't know if the Fed wins, if you will, by getting more aggressive right away. I do expect the trajectory of dots in the out years and maybe even the long run dot to shift higher. And that makes sense for all the reasons you guys discussed. The economy is doing better. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, what is the headwinds turning to tailwinds. So that's what we're expecting as we head into this afternoon. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.